Good morning. Happy Christmas. I'm saying that intentionally because a lot of the sacred world thinks it's over, it's just starting. 12 days of Christmas, 6th of January, the celebration of the Epiphany. So that's as much of sunlight you're going to, not sunlight, but sunrise moment light. There's the Mount of Olives in view with the Tower of the Ascension lifting up our eyes to heaven with that golden light of sunrise but with all the cloud we won't see any sun disks this morning. We're here at Notre Dame at the front door and there's a big bus there and a van and some palm trees and sleepy people and waking people and I'm not going out in the rain, if you allow me and understand me. And there we have two people going to the Holy Sepulchre, Rocio and Alessandra, volunteer and consecrated woman, ever filled with energy, Alessandra. And then we do a couple of Christmassy moments for men here. Today is a very special day, also particularly in Jerusalem, because here, Stephen was martyred, and we have that first great witness. That's the wording of the word martyr. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Just want to show you this tree we have here in Notre Dame, the auditorium, and the famous rooftop restaurant up there. Originally called the Wine and Cheese Restaurant. We have a very blessed staff serving here. Thanks be to God. Wonderful attitude. Pilgrims notice it immediately. So I'm just going to show you a few little Christmassy themes here in, in um, Notre Dame. This is the Vatican-owned guest house in Jerusalem. The Vatican stepped in to save a difficult situation for the local Christian community when this guest house was being lost for the service of pilgrims and here we have our crash scene Christmas motifs tens of thousands of people came they come to visit a lot of Jewish people come they're curious they're interested they're culturally interested they want to make connections and they come, also we had lots and lots of Palestinian Christians here, and they would be crowding and mixing in together, gathered around the creche, waiting for the baby to come. They're always asking, where's the baby? Because we didn't have the baby on Christmas night here in the manger. And little children come in, the parents lift them in over the edge, and they come over. They want to come in to caress the lambs, to get that feeling of, of the joy of Christmas that warmness, that intimacy of a new baby, that extraordinary moment in the life of each human being that we as Christians see as God's own take for our own life. And here we have our wonderful friend. Hello. And then all this incredible uh, shoes make. Nida. 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 She is an amazing lady here in taking care of the pilgrims, providing the rooms. And here's Walid. Walid means little baby, so he's a good Christmas theme. <laughs> I call Walid my favorite imam in Notre Dame. <laughs> How many years have you been working here, Walid? Only 40 years. Only 40 years? Yes. Wow, where were we all 40 years ago? Imagine. This little baby, that's Walid means a little baby in Arabic, isn't that amazing? So um, we're going to uh, go upstairs as well to see a picture too upstairs uh, near the chapel. Uh, here's the decoration into the dining room. And people are already having some breakfast. Let's go in a little bit. And see what they have for breakfast in case you're hungry. And here we 
have another depressing. Ah, these are our volunteers. I thought you went to Magdala last night. You're going today. Very good. And Alexander is being visited by his daughter. Alejandro is a volunteer from Mexico. And hello there. Good morning. Happy Christmas. I'm very happy. Where are you from? Spain. Spain. Another volunteer from Spain. From Valencia, living in Madrid. We have a Christmas tree here in the dining room as well. Good morning. And here we have the food. You know, some people in the, at least in where I, when I was raised, you'd be wondering where, what would you do with olives at breakfast? But people do that here in the Middle East. And we have all these cheeses and cold cuts. We have a little problem with connectivity, so I might, I might go out here. It's early and people are already having breakfast. I think I forgot to turn off the Wi-Fi in my tiredness. And while, while our very, how many years are you working here, while? 36 years, so you came after Walid. Well, well, uh, while is our our guest man, our um, maitre d here in the morning at breakfast. So, while is quite a kind, and we had a priest arrived last night, and he was here I think about eight or ten years ago, and this priest who came last night, Father Fenton from Brazil, and Maher is our maitre d in the evening time, and he's also served here many many years. And he said, Father Fenton, he knew his name. And he said, do you want your black tea after dinner? He remembered. <laughs> Here we have a little history of Notre Dame from its construction from its earlier days. Well, it's life really that was then already finished. And here we have some construction pictures. Where we can see the before the towers were put up. And then you can see, and even one of the monks was getting a haircut from a brother monk. We still do that in our community. Father Salvador cuts our hair, he's 82 years of age. Pictures from 19th century. And the first car which came to Jerusalem it says here it was driven by an American, Mr. Uh, Charles Jasper Glidden. March 1908, on the 16th of March. So he came the day before St. Patrick's Day. It was a Napier car with a 24 horsepower engine. So, so much history, you know, so much history in all our lives and all our families in humanity. And we have that difficult history today of persecution, of religious history. And St. Stephen we remember today and the great strength of the martyrs. And one thing I love about St. Stephen is expressed in the psalm, into your hands I commend my spirit. Good morning. From Japan. Yes. Uh, Ohio Godzimas. Ohio Godzimas. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And here we have the Christmas scene and this beautiful icon by Gerard Gerardo Centeno from Chile. And some more icons. I hope the Wi Fi behaves well here. And so the, the martyrs give great witness. And we're all martyrs in a way because uh, we give witness. We give witness to our values. Resurrection moment here. We won't go into all these details now. We'll just give you a little atmosphere. The Last Supper. And we're doing a live stream. This is Father Peter Vaccari. He used to be he used to be rector in New York Seminary. He was here many and so Father Peter is now the director of Kenewa. What is Kenewa? So Kenewa is the Catholic Near East Welfare Association a pontifical agency responsible for bringing humanitarian and pastoral assistance to the Eastern Catholic Churches. 
What are the Eastern Catholic churches? I'm sorry, Father? What are the Eastern Catholic churches? Eastern Catholic churches are very important for us. They represent the churches that go back to the time of Jesus, the earliest apostles. Okay. Go again, yeah. And we have a very rich historical, cultural, liturgical tradition that is associated with each of the 23 Eastern Catholic churches. Wow. And so the opportunity to serve with this particular agency has been a great privilege in my life. The chair of our International Board of Trustees, this is Eminence Timothy Michael, Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of New York, and I report to him and to the Prefect of the Congregation. Cut again. There, there's little breaks in the transmission. That's good. Could you give us the names of two or three of these churches just so we try and make it more concrete? Sure. So when we're talking about the Eastern Catholic churches, we are talking about the whole Byzantine tradition. Okay. We're talking about the, uh, for example, the Cyril Malakar and the Cyril Malakar churches. They're in India. Who are in India, exactly. And we're talking also about another group like the Armenian Catholics. Okay. The Coptic Catholics would be in the area of Egypt. Right. All of these churches trace their roots back to the earliest experiences of the Catholic Church. Oh, wow. This is great. The experience of Christianity, the first disciples who went out. That's wonderful, Father Peter. So we wish you many blessings in your work. Thank you. It's always good to see you, your enthusiasm, and your promotion for all things that are associated here. And yes. And also, of course, in Magdala. And with mankind. And with you, all of everyone, with everyone. Right. Father You're Peter, thank you. To humankind. <laughs> You're an ambassador to humankind. Thank you, Father Peter. Thank you for that title. This is a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing fine. I, I'm keeping going here now. Father Peter is a great spirit and encourager. Here we might have people praying, so I don't want to interrupt too much. No, they have finished singing and they've gone to their rooms. So not a soul in here, so it's all for us. How about that? Here we have this beautiful chapel. I'm not sure if I've shown it to you on our live streams. We often have masses here. We had a lot of masses here for Christmas. Also pilgrims from Korea, from Indonesia, from Malaysia. And there's also two Christmas motifs here. So we have the, the little baby here that was introduced on Christmas night to remind us of the meaning of the reason for the season. And this nice little cloth hanging here where the word of God is put, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So this is just a little, and we plan to be back in um, Galilee uh, today, God willing, to drive back this morning. So maybe we'll have some live streams for you tomorrow. So let us take great inspiration for the seriousness also of the gift of the Christ child. This is a, a great gift to encourage us in life, to bring warmth into life in a cold world, and to be a witness to goodness, to forgiveness, to service, to readiness to uh, give a little joy, to put the other person first, to come to serve. And this brings the warmth into families, to come to reconcile, to come to help, to assist, to inspire. May the Lord bless you and keep you and see you later, alligators.